Hi, I'm Trishantan Anakara. Uh, I'm a professor of robotics at Imperial College London. Uh, as a Sri Lankan, I have been closely monitoring and watching uh, what is happening in Sri Lanka uh, with uh, so much shock and sadness. Um, and then I wholeheartedly congratulate uh, the people of Sri Lanka for their massive struggle. Um, and then we did our bit, all the Sri Lankans living abroad uh, did our bit by demonstrating and joining uh, those protests. That led to some positive change. So we all noticed that the government structure changed and the politicians had to rethink about their strategies. Um, uh, we, we may or may not like uh, the final outcome, uh, but I wholeheartedly congratulate the new uh, president of Sri Lanka, Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe. So uh, you have all our support, irrespective of our political biases. So what I wanted to talk today was beyond that political drama. So the struggle should continue. The struggle uh, is about people's struggle. Uh, we should continue to do what we can uh, within our own professional capacities to rebuild Sri Lanka. Uh, no matter where we live in the world, we can contribute in various ways. As a, as a professor, uh, as an academic, um, I, I have a suggestion to the Sri Lankan university system, uh, Sri Lankan uh, professors and my academic colleagues uh, in more than 15 universities in Sri Lanka. You have a massive role here. Universities are places for intellectuals. You can do innovations. Uh, here in UK, for example, at Imperial College, we spin out uh, more than more than 100 companies uh, in 10 years. Right? So it has been increasing, and then the value of the companies we have spun off at Imperial College only within the last 10 years, uh, the value uh, is more than 2.5 billion pounds, which is about more than three billion dollars of worth value added to the UK economy. This is what a single university can do and then uh, shared uh, with other universities. The university system is pumping value uh, to the UK economy. Uh, Sri Lankan universities should do the same and can do the same. Um, so uh, I, have be, I, I was working uh, as a senior lecturer at University of Moratua uh, for four years before uh, leaving the country in 2006. I know the potential and the capacity uh, the, our students have and then our academics have. Um, what, what it needs is a little bit of uh, more uh, support and gearing, uh, like it, it needs a little bit of lubrication uh, and a collaboration. So uh, it was very rare to see collaborations across different universities. Uh, to go beyond our individual capacities, we have to collaborate in teams and then go for bigger goals, right? For example, University of Moratu is really good at uh, engineering. And then uh, there are other universities that are really good in agriculture uh, or medicine or law uh, and, uh, you know, of, um, maybe chemistry, things like that. So these universities should come together and then share their expertise and pool their expertise um, to think about what they can do to add value. Uh, to the country's resources. So Sri Lanka is surrounded by shallow waters, right? There is a lot of marine resources you can tap into. Uh, at least underwater underwater tourism, let's say, you know, marine tourism can be promoted. If you, for example, I mean, coming from a robotics background, right? So if you, if you, if you um, use uh, shallow water uh, robotic cameras, for example, and then promote uh, nice, beautiful tropical sceneries, and then even you know develop apps uh, where we people can just log in to these cameras and then you know watch um, tropical underwater sceneries live or even interact with them you know drive these cameras and then uh, you know pay some subscription fee just imagine like you know if millions and millions of people subscribe to these kind of apps uh, sri lanka will get money like remote tourism money right 
uh, and then seaweed for example like you know think about adding value to the seaweeds and uh, marine other marine resources uh, so that is just just one right so the mechanism would be um, my guess is that uh, you have your final year students right so they 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 have to do a project to graduate you can release them uh, rather than the academics choosing their you know projects and titles for them uh, get these students to go and just look around right so in the local and cottage industries for example it can be cheese making industries or curd making industries fishing villages and just go and let them go and talk to these um, cottage industries or SMEs and uh, small companies, there are challenges, right? So like, you know, they may not trust you uh, to to be, uh, you know, worthy partners, for example, right? you know, because um, they may have not seen something coming out of universities. First, it will be a struggle. But if you um, give them a fair assurance that you will, you will give it a shot, um, then you might end up doing something. So the, prop, the, the, the mechanism I propose is like the, let the students go and talk to the, all these uh, cottage industries, SMEs, identify projects that they can do, and then come back to the university and brainstorm what they can do and what they cannot do to solve the bigger problem, right? And then find partners across the university system. Right? For example, an engineering student may identify a opportunity to develop a uh, let's say a control system uh, to uh, control a greenhouse to dry fish for example uh, but he doesn't know about nutrition he doesn't know about taste and things like that and then that way you know maybe he can for example university as a, a student from university of Monitor could collaborate with a student from a student group from YMB University or you know some other university who knows about food and nutrition and then do a final year project, which which is really adding value to that industry. So as far as it is like, you know, siloed atoms, it is not going to make an impact. You have to collaborate. Uh, multidisciplinary teams should collaborate to solve these problems. So even if that student project ends up in um, a failure, for example, you know, it is not going to de de you know, deliver some tangible uh, output the experience the students are going to get by going to the villages, going to and talking to the stu uh, you know, the industries, designing a project, a grounded project, collaborating with the uh, the industry partners, and uh, you know taking that co-design approach, adds a lot of value to the student's career. So they can say that story with pride, and then uh, when they when they go to the job market. Um, you know, their employers will see a lot of value in uh, user-centered design thinking uh, ability in these students, uh, you know, more grounded people uh, who can solve things or make an attempt to solve things. So this is uh, what I'm going to propose with the resources you have because uh, you don't need a lot of uh, resources for that. So if there is any shortage of, let's say, support or in technology or money, for example, if these projects can be uh, put online or on your university websites, for example, um, and or even National Science Foundation website, uh, that gives some credibility to these projects. Like, so you know, if you have a clear problem statement, a clear uh, methodology plan and then clear description of who the beneficiaries are, uh, the industry partners are, or the SMEs and things like that. So, and then you know their contact details and everything. Uh, there can be some kind of a waiting process, and then you can ask like what you need from outside the Sri Lanka, right? So if you say like you know I, I we are looking for some expert who can advise us on this point. And then we have uh, collected this much money, but we are short of this much money, and people can donate money. So it, this is where all the Sri Lankans living outside, Sri, uh, you know, uh, abroad can come into uh, you know the scene and then help. Um, not even Sri Lankans, like you know, so other others friends of Sri Lanka will just jump in if you if you go halfway through and then you know take the challenge. 
So, and then these things can develop to more, uh, you know, refined master's projects or even PhD projects in the future. And then this, these things will continue to add value to the country's economy. So this is how the struggle should continue beyond a political struggle. So, uh, so people should take responsibility to rebuild uh, Sri Lanka. It is not just don't, please don't leave it to only politicians. Politicians can do something, but it is, it is, there is a limitation for that. We should take responsibility and we should, we should continue the struggle, uh, you know, continue the same spirit of fighting and rebuild Sri Lanka. We can do it together if you, if you, uh, if you show uh, willpower and then I'm sure Sri Lankans will show that willpower. And once again, uh, I should, I should uh, congratulate all the Sri Lankans who fought and who made a difference. And then uh, all Sri Lankans, irrespective of all, you know, this political divisions, and I have my own political views, and irrespective of political divisions, will support the 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 uh, the new president of Sri Lanka to stabilize the country. Uh, uh, so Mr. Ranul Vikram Singh should be uh, reassured uh, that uh, we will do whatever possible from outside Sri Lanka to help you uh, to rebuild Sri Lanka. Focus on your uh, the human rights, uh, you know, the political will to make a difference, and the rebuild international relations relations. Don't isolate Sri Lanka from the rest of the world. Show that Sri Lanka is a credible country and a, and a, a, you know, a country with high moral uh, grounds and values that is worthy of support. Uh, please don't make the mistakes that pre predecessors did. Don't make divisions among Sinhalese, uh, Muslims and Tamils. Unite Sri Lanka. We are all the sons and daughters of Sri Lanka. Never make that mistake of division and doing politics uh, along you know, ethnic or religious lines. If you do, uh, we will come after you. Uh, we will do the same uh, and then send you home. Uh, but I hope you will not. Thank you very much.